a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Nancy Pelosi Nancy Patricia D'Alessandra Pelosi is an American politician serving as the minority leader of the United States House of Representatives since 2011, representing California's 12th Congressional District. She previously served as the 52nd Speaker of the House from 2007 to 2011, the only woman to do so. Her ascent to House Speaker also made her the highest-ranking female politician in the history of the United States. A member of the Democratic Party, Pelosi represents California's 12th Congressional District which consists of four-fifths of the city and county of San Francisco. The district was numbered as the fifth during Pelosi's first three terms in the House, and as the eighth from 1993 to 2013. She served as the House Minority Whip from 2002 to 2003, and was House Minority Leader from 2003 to 2007. Holding the post during the 108th and 109th Congresses under George W. Bush, Pelosi is the first woman, the first Californian, and the first Italian-American to lead a major party in Congress. After the Democrats took control of the House in 2007 and increased their majority in 2009, Pelosi was elected Speaker of the House. After the Democrats lost House control in the 2010 elections, Pelosi was elected as the Democratic leader by House Democrats and therefore the minority leader in the Republican-controlled House from 2011 to 2019. During and after her tenure as Speaker, Pelosi was perceived as a contentious political figure, with Republican candidates frequently trying to tie their Democratic opponents to Pelosi, and with moderate Democrats seeking to show their moderate bona fides by expressing opposition to Pelosi. Pelosi is expected to run for Speaker of the House of Representatives on the opening of the 116th U.S. Congress on January 3, 2019. If re-elected Speaker, Pelosi would become the seventh individual to return to the Speakership on non-consecutive terms of office and the first since Sam Rayburn in 1955. Early Life and Education Pelosi was born in Baltimore to an Italian-American family, the youngest of six children of Ann and Charter M. Nancy, D'Alessandro, who was born in Campo Basso, South Italy, and Thomas D'Alessandro, Jr who was a Democratic congressman from Maryland and a mayor of Baltimore. Pelosi's brother, Thomas D'Alessandro III, also a Democrat, was mayor of Baltimore from 1967 to 1971. Pelosi was involved with politics from an early age. In her outgoing remarks as the 52nd Speaker of the House, Pelosi said that she had attended John F. Kennedy's inaugural address when he became U.S. President in January 1961. She graduated from the Institute of Notre Dame, a Catholic all-girls high school in Baltimore, in 1962. She graduated from Trinity College in Washington, D.C., with a B.A. in political science. Pelosi interned for Senator Daniel Brewster alongside future House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer. Early Career After moving to San Francisco, Pelosi worked her way up in Democratic politics. She became a friend of one of the leaders of the California Democratic Party, 5th District Congressman Philip Burton. In 1976, Pelosi was elected as a Democratic National Committee member from California, a position she would hold until 1996. She was elected as party chair for Northern California on January 30, 1977, and for the California Democratic Party, which she held from 1981 until 1983. That same year, she ran to succeed Chuck Manet as chair of the Democratic National Committee, but lost to then DNC Treasurer Paul G. Kirk. Pelosi left her post as DSCC finance chair in 1986. Elections Philip Burton died in 1983 and was succeeded by his wife, Sala. In late 1986, Sala became ill with cancer and decided not to run for re-election in 1988. She picked Pelosi as her designated successor, guaranteeing her the support of the Burton's contacts. Sala died on February 1, 1987, just a month after being sworn in for a second full term. Pelosi won the special election to succeed her, 
narrowly defeating San Francisco supervisor Harry Britt on April 7, 1987, then easily defeating Republican candidate Harriet Ross on June 2, 1987. Pelosi took office a week later. Pelosi represents one of the safest Democratic districts in the country. Democrats have held the seat since 1949 and Republicans, who currently make up only 13 percent of registered voters in the district, have not made a serious bid for the seat since the early 1960s. She won the seat in her own right in 1988 and has been re-elected 16 more times with no substantive opposition, winning by an average of 80 percent of the vote. She has not participated in candidates' debates since her 1987 race against Harriet Ross. The strongest challenge Pelosi has faced was in 2016 when Preston Pikers polled 19.1% and Pelosi won with 80.9%. For the 2000 and 2002 election cycles, she held the distinction of contributing the most among members of Congress to other congressional campaigns, in part, because she is in a safe district and does not need the campaign funds. Pre-speakership career In 2001, Pelosi was elected the House Minority Whip, second in command to Minority Leader Dick Gephardt of Missouri. She was the first woman in U.S. history to hold that post. In 2002, after Gephardt resigned as Minority Leader to seek the Democratic nomination in the 2004 presidential election, Pelosi was elected to replace him, becoming the first woman to lead a major party in the House. Nomination in the 2006 midterm elections, the Democrats took control of the House, picking up 31 seats. On November 16, 2006, Pelosi was unanimously chosen by her caucus as the Democratic candidate for Speaker, effectively making her Speaker-elect. While the Speaker is elected by the full House membership, in modern practice the election is a formality, since the Speaker always comes from the majority party. Pelosi supported her longtime friend John Murtha of Pennsylvania for the position of House Majority Leader, the second-ranking post in the House Democratic Caucus. His competitor was House Minority Whip Steny Hoyer of Maryland, who had been Pelosi's second-in-command since 2003. Pelosi and Hoyer had a somewhat frosty relationship dating back to 2001, when they ran against each other for Minority Whip. However, Hoyer was elected as House Majority Leader over Murtha by a margin of 149.86 within the caucus. On January 3, Pelosi defeated Republican John Boehner of Ohio with 233 votes compared to his 202 votes in the election for Speaker of the House. She was nominated by Rahm Emanuel of Illinois, the incoming chairman of the House Democratic Caucus, and sworn in by her longtime friend John Dingell of Michigan as the Dean of the House of Representatives traditionally does. With her election, Pelosi became the first woman, the first Californian, and the first Italian-American to hold the speakership. She is also the second speaker from a state west of the Rocky Mountains. The first was Washington's Tom Foley, the last Democrat to hold the post before Pelosi. During her speech, she discussed the historical importance of being the first female to hold the position of Speaker. This is a historic moment for the Congress, and for the women of this country. It is a moment for which we have waited more than 200 years. Never losing faith, we waited through the many years of struggle to achieve our rights. But women weren't just waiting, women were working. Never losing faith, we worked to redeem the promise of America, that all men and women are created equal. For our daughters and granddaughters, today, we have broken the marble ceiling. For our daughters and our granddaughters, the sky is the limit, anything is possible for them. She also spoke on Iraq as the major issue facing the 110th Congress. While incorporating some Democratic Party beliefs, the election of 2006 was a call to change not merely to change the control of Congress, but for a new direction for our country. Nowhere were the American people more clear about the need for a new direction than in Iraq. The American people rejected an open-ended obligation to a war without end. Tenure As Speaker, Pelosi was still the leader of the House Democrats. The Speaker is considered to be the leader of his or her House caucus. However, by tradition, she did not normally participate in debate, and almost never voted on the floor. 
She was also not a member of any House committees. Pelosi was re-elected Speaker in 2009. A CBS News poll conducted in March 2010 found that 37% of registered voters have an unfavorable opinion of the Speaker, with 11% approving. According to a March 2010 Rasmussen poll, 64% of voters nationally view the Speaker unfavorably, and 29% have a favorable opinion of Pelosi. During and after her tenure as Speaker, Pelosi was perceived as a contentious political figure with Republican candidates frequently trying to tie their Democratic opponents to Pelosi and with moderate Democrats seeking to show their moderate bona fides by expressing opposition to Pelosi. Shortly after winning re-election, President George W. Bush claimed a mandate for an ambitious second-term agenda and proposed reforming Social Security by allowing workers to redirect a portion of their Social Security withholding into stock and bond investments. Pelosi strongly opposed the plan, saying there was no crisis, and as minority leader she imposed intense party discipline on her caucus, leading them to near-unanimous opposition to Bush's proposal and subsequent defeat of the proposed plan. In the wake of President George W. Bush's re-election in 2004, several leading House Democrats believed that Democrats should pursue impeachment proceedings against the President. They asserted that Bush had misled Congress about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and had violated the civil liberties of Americans by authorizing wiretaps without a warrant. In May 2006, with an eye on the upcoming congressional elections which offered the possibility of Democrats taking back control of the House for the first time since 1994 Pelosi told colleagues that, while the Democrats would conduct vigorous oversight of Bush administration policy, an impeachment investigation was off the table. After becoming Speaker of the House in January 2007, Pelosi held firm against impeachment, notwithstanding strong support for that course of action among constituents in her home district. In the November 2008 election, Pelosi withstood a challenge for her seat by anti-war activist Cindy Sheehan who ran as an independent primarily because of Pelosi's refusal to pursue impeachment. Prior to the U.S. 2006 midterm elections, Pelosi announced a plan for action, if elected. She and the newly empowered Democratic caucus would push through most of its program during the first hundred hours of the 110th Congress term. The origin for the name, First Hundred Hours, is a play on words derived from former Democratic President Franklin D. Roosevelt's promise for quick action on the part of government during his first hundred days in office. Newt Gingrich, who became Speaker of the House in 1995, had a similar 100-day agenda to implement the contract with America. On January 5, 2007, reacting to suggestions from President Bush's confidants that he would increase troop levels in Iraq, Pelosi joined with Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid to condemn the plan. They sent Bush a letter saying, T here is no purely military solution in Iraq. There is only a political solution. Adding more combat troops will only endanger more Americans and stretch our military to the breaking point for no strategic gain. Rather than deploy additional forces to Iraq, we believe the way forward is to begin the phased redeployment of our forces in the next four to six months while shifting the principal mission of our forces there from combat to training, logistics, force protection, and counter-terror. Pelosi was named permanent chair of the 2008 Democratic National Convention in Denver, Colorado. Pelosi has been credited for spearheading President Obama's health care law when it seemed that it would go down in defeat. After Republican Scott Brown won Democrat Ted Kennedy's former Senate seat in the January 2010 Massachusetts special election and thereby causing the Senate Democrats to lose their filibuster-proof majority, Obama agreed with then-Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel's idea that he should do smaller initiatives that could pass easily. Pelosi, however, dismissed the president's fear and instead mocked his scaled-back ideas as, kiddie care. After convincing the president that this would be their only shot at health care, because of the large Democratic majorities they currently had, she rallied her Democratic caucus as she began an unbelievable marathon of a two-month session to craft the health care bill, which successfully passed the House with a 219-212 vote. In Obama's remarks before signing the bill into law, he specifically credited Pelosi as being one of the best speakers the House of Representatives has ever had.
post-speakership career. Though Pelosi was re-elected by a comfortable margin in the 2010 midterm elections, the Democrats lost 63 seats and ceded control of the House of Representatives to the Republicans. Despite the electoral setback suffered by her party, Pelosi sought to continue leading the House Democratic Caucus in the position of minority leader, the office she held prior to becoming Speaker. After Pelosi's desperate intra-party opposition failed to pass a motion to delay the leadership vote, Pelosi was elected minority leader for the 112th Congress. On November 14, 2012, Pelosi announced she would remain on as Democratic leader. In August 2016, Pelosi said her personal contact information was posted online following a cyber attack against top Democratic campaign committees, and she had received obscene and sick calls, voicemails and text messages. She warned members of Congress to avoid letting children or family members answer phone calls or read text messages. Tim Ryan initiated a bid to replace Pelosi as House Minority Leader on November 17, 2016, prompted by colleagues following the 2016 presidential election. After Pelosi agreed to give more leadership opportunities to junior members, she defeated Ryan by a vote of 134-63 on November 30. In 2017, after Democrats lost four consecutive special elections in the House of Representatives, Pelosi's leadership was again called into question. On June 22, 2017, a small group of House Democrats held a closed-door meeting in the office of Representative Kathleen Rice to discuss a strategy for selecting new Democratic leadership. Rice publicly called for new Democratic leadership in the House of Representatives, as did other House Democrats, including Tim Ryan, Seth Moulton, and Philemon Veya. Cedric Richmond, chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus, also attended the closed-door meeting on Pelosi. Rice said in a CNN interview about Pelosi's leadership, if you were talking about a company that was posting losing numbers, if you were talking about any sports team that was losing time and time again, changes would be made, right? The CEO out. The coach would be out and there would be a new strategy put in place. In a press conference, Pelosi responded to the criticism by saying, I respect any opinion that my members have, but my decision about how long I stay is not up to them. When asked specifically why she should stay on as House Minority Leader after numerous Democratic seats were lost, Pelosi responded, Well, I'm a master legislator. I am a strategic, politically astute leader. My leadership is recognized by many around the country, and that is why I'm able to attract the support that I do. In November 2017, after Pelosi called for the resignation of John Conyers over allegations of harassment, she convened the first in a series of planned meetings on strategies to address reforming workplace policies in the wake of national attention to sexual harassment. Pelosi said Congress had a moral duty to the brave women and men coming forward to seize this moment and demonstrate real, effective leadership to foster a climate of respect and dignity in the workplace. In February 2018, Pelosi sent a letter to Speaker Ryan accusing Republicans with having waged a cover-up campaign to ensure Trump's protect and cited last-minute changes to the memo after a vote for its release as dangerous and violating House rules, saying, House Republicans' pattern of obstruction and cover-up to hide the truth about the Trump-Russia scandal represents a threat to our intelligence and our national security. The GOP has led a partisan effort to distort intelligence and discredit the U.S. law enforcement and intelligence communities. In February 2018, Pelosi broke the record for longest speech in the House of Representatives when she spent more than eight hours recounting stories from dreamless individuals who were brought to the United States as minors by undocumented immigrants to object to a budget deal which would raise spending caps without addressing the future of DACA recipients, which were at risk of deportation by the Trump administration. In a February 2018 letter to House Speaker Ryan, Pelosi stated that a move by House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes and House Republicans to release a bogus memo has taken the GOP's cover-up campaign to a new, completely unacceptable extreme, furthering that it was illegitimate and a violating of House rules. She charged Nunes with partaking in deliberately dishonest actions and called for his immediate removal from his position. In May 2018, after the White House invited two Republicans 
and no Democrats to a briefing by Department of Justice officials on an FBI informant that made contact with the Trump campaign, Pelosi. And Senate Minority Leader Schumer sent a letter to Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein and FBI Director Ray calling for a bipartisan Gang of Eight briefing that involves congressional leadership from both chambers. In August 2018, Pelosi called for the resignation of Duncan D. Hunter after his indictment on charges of misusing at least $250,000 in campaign funds, saying in a statement that the charges were evidence of the rampant culture of corruption among Republicans in Washington today. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries Would you like to know more?